Today, on Radford School, A History, we will be discussing the origins of Radford School and the impact that Dr. Templin had on the school's legacy. Why are you talking like that? It makes me feel important and serious, like I have a degree in journalism and everything I say is true. Okay, well, I guess you should continue then? Radford School is an independent, non-sectarian... Which means that we don't involve or relate to any specific religion or political group. We are open to all people, welcoming to people of all backgrounds, and we are a very diverse community. May I continue? Radford is a co-educational college preparatory school that serves on an assorted student body in grades pre-kindergarten to 12. Everybody knows that Radford School... Everyone at this school knows! Or we assume they all know. Do you know? Well, did you know that Radford School was established in 1910 and that it was originally a school called El Paso School for Girls? But what you don't know is that Radford was originally a school for girls that were trained to be top FBI agents and elite assassins. They were going to lead the world into a new world. Stop! Into what are you doing? I'm enriching the story. No, you're not. What you're doing is lying. Well, you call it lion, but I call it life enriching. You're not helping. Go away. Radford School was founded by local businessmen and area ranchers who wanted their daughters to receive an education which would qualify them to enter any Eastern college or university. They, they could also skip college and simply be finished young ladies in their own home. Ah, yes, read and write and speak three different languages, all while doing needlework on horseback and side saddle, of course. Yes, of course, they could become well-educated women in their own homes. What we need to understand is that the American education system was usually a one-room schoolhouse that taught basic grammar and mathematical skills, staffed by teachers with little formal training and with students who ranged in ages 5 to 20 years old. The most common way of teaching was repetition and memorization. These were the conditions for decades, but change was soon on the horizon. The founders sought out more for their daughters and opened the first all-girls schools in El Paso. The first buildings used were homes in the Sunset Heights area on September 15, 1910, with Ora W. L. Slater and Miss O.E. Taffel as associate principals. At the time, they had 18 people. The homes overlooked the Rio Grande River in Juarez, Mexico. The school was so close to the border that shots could be heard, and stray bullets were a normality. It was the Wild West all over El Paso. Remember, at this time, Pancho Villa was fighting in the Mexican Revolution and the war was spilling over the border. Now something had to be done for the safety of the school's occupants. So, on January 18, 1918, they relocated from the Sunset Heights area to a three-story building on an eight-acre tract near Fort Bliss in the Austin Terrace area, where our school still stands today. I'm impressed. Very good. Huh. I know. Shall we continue? Be my guest. Now, what came next, you may ask? What? The Roaring Twenties. The Jazz Age. The Flapper. Yes, with the Mexican Revolution, the influenza, and World War I behind us, the El Paso School for Girls trailed forward. The Roaring Twenties were short-lived as the Depression was fast approaching. Ah, but not to worry, because the Age of Templin soon began in 1928, and so began many of the traditions which we still celebrate today. Dr. Lucinda Templin assumed her duties as principal of the El Paso School for Girls on August 1927. But soon, she discovered the school had a $40,000 deficit. That's like having, what, $567,758.19 deficit in today's economy. That's such a specific amount. How do you know that's the amount? I looked it up. Nice. Uh, luckily, Dr. Templin took on the deficit head-on and persuaded Mr. and Mrs. George A. Radford of Wester Groves to rescue the school from financial ruin. By 1931, the school was deeded to the Radfords, who paid off the school's mortgage and built a $50,000 addition to the school. Now, who were these Radfords, you may be asking? Well, even if you're not asking, I'm still going to tell you. 
Dr. Templin was a classmate of Julia Brown, Mrs. Radford, at the University of Missouri. Julia Brown's father, Caleb Dula, owned and operated a small tobacco farm near Nevada. He soon learned of a curing process developed in Mexico in which molasses and peppermint were used to make the product more moist and flavorful. Adopting this recipe, he began producing a popular chewing tobacco. The American Tobacco Company soon felt the competition from Caleb Dula, but instead of getting cash for his crops and formula, he chose to buy shares in the American Tobacco Company, and that is how he soon found himself to be a millionaire. Wow, chewing tobacco saved the day. But you rarely hear that. The El Paso School for Girls was changed to Radford School to honor the school's benefactors. As soon as the school was financially secure, Dr. Templin set out to make the school solid and productive in the education of young ladies under her care. As Dr. Templin said, there is no easy road to education and no substitute for character. The development of character and honesty along classic college preparatory courses were stressed by Dr. Templin. In 1933, a substantial addition to the school's facility was made by the G.A. Radford Estate. In 1937, another building was erected and the campus was increased to 22 acres. Then in 1956, the Nellie Brown Keller Hall was dedicated, increasing dormitories and classroom spaces. In the years Dr. Templin was principal at Radford, she established many of the values and traditions we still follow today. Which tradition do you think is the most unique? I would have to say our lunch. The Daily Lunch is a formal family-style setting that emphasizes etiquette while encouraging students to interact with others of different ages and grades. Well, what other traditions do we have? We have Spirit Week, Radford Day, May Fate Fall Festival, Christmas Operetta, Ulog, Senior Dinner, and a variety of athletic activities. Many of these ceremonies and traditions were transplanted from Stevens College and Columbia College. Dr. Templin not only saved the school from financial ruin, but enriched and inspired the school with a legacy of academic excellence. She also left behind an extensive collection of artifacts. Dr. Templin was the principal from 1927 to 1968. Now that's dedication. That's 41 years. That's more years than we've been alive. Combined. She had many interests, but if you walk through the halls of Radford School, you'll get a glimpse of her main interests. Napoleon Bonaparte. Radford has a large collection of Napoleon figures. And military artifacts. The school has many worldwide military material and souvenirs. Did you know Radford used to have a military cannon in front of the school? Can you imagine? Radford probably looked like a military school. Dr. Templin died May 13, 1969, only days before the traditional commencement ceremony. She left behind a legacy that is still celebrated today. Bradford School will continue to develop young minds and shape future leaders of the world.